Hello loves and happy Tuesday. Welcome to the Faith Based Storyteller Show. I'm your host, Michaela Robertson, and thank you for joining me for another day, another week, and another opportunity to walk in the Lord's will for our lives. Now you're listening to the Faith Based Storyteller Show where we sharpen and encourage one another in Christ by sharing our testimony and our story. And today on this Testimony Tuesday, this terrific Tuesday, this talk about everything that the Lord is doing in our lives Tuesday, I want to introduce you guys to an amazing woman who has been such a blessing in my life, Kai Lee. Now, Kai Lee is not just the prophetic prayer coach in the Faith Audio Network, but she is a dear friend and this woman is on fire when it comes to hearing the voice of God, obediently walking in the Lord's will for her life, and then on top of that, serving others with her God-given gift. I am super excited to dive into this episode with you because I recorded this interview months ago and I just think it's so fitting that we just happen to change directions and go in the direction of the faith-based storyteller show because Kylie is a faith-based storyteller and she really, she really demonstrates her faith and her action, but she also increases people's faith through the stories that she tells in her life and in the lives of those around her. So without further ado, please enjoy today's episode and today's interview with the amazing Kai Lee. Hi, Michaela. Um, nice to see you all. It's so nice to have you here. I'm super excited to dive into what the Lord is doing in your life. But first, can you introduce yourself and tell the people who you are and what you do? That's a very interesting question because it, um, <laughs> Like uh, when I, before I became a mother and I had a different jobs I went through, but when I met God and I became a born again Christian and I became a mother and God spoke to me, my highest calling is to become a godly mother over my children. So I became, I decided to be a full-time mom and I learned so much about uh, his love and raising children. And um, so from the time, and then God led me the journey to become an intercessor. So I can tell, I can tell you that I'm a prophet intercessor because uh, over the over the years, and that's how He taught me how to be obedient, how to hear His voice, and how to pray according to His will. And then, um, then later on, that God uh, led me to have a journey with uh, some amazing woman to burst out their dreams and call. And I thought, and then God spoke to me that you are a midwife. And I thought, okay, what is the midwife <laughs> in spirit? So, and then actually that's the journey I started with those uh, ladies and then who became um, a very prominent, um, um, prominent, amazing woman in uh, different ministry. And then, so I walk with them pray once a week and whenever God show me something and I pray with them and pray through those uh, those challenges so that uh, I see literally what God is doing. My job, my my privilege is that I can witness what God is doing in people's life. And so that um, I'm, I'm just grateful what I'm witnessing, what God is doing. And there are more for those ladies. And then, uh, so I'm a Prophet intercessor, mm -hmm. and then midwife in spirit, and then oh. God led me a journey, led me a journey through this P two P program, that I was able to meet these amazing ladies, mm -hmm. like oh hi P two P sisters, <laughs> amazing ladies. God, um, and God started to show me that um, those dreams God has for each one of them. You know, sometimes you know, like uh, God has a much bigger dreams than what we can imagine. And mm -hmm. but we sometimes we are stuck in the situation what we see, what we experience in the past and what we can do. So uh, we cannot really dream beyond what we know and what we can, but actually God has a much bigger dream for in each one of us. So when I was in the P2P program and God um, showed me some of those amazing dreams for some of the um, ladies I was able to connect. And so, and then after that, God said to me, God is raising the army of ladies, army of women in this hour. And God said, uh, but they will have a lot of challenges. And but so uh, they need a lot of empowerment. And mm -hmm. so so that's why I decided to become an empowerment coach, like prophetic empowerment coach. So anybody who need to have a confirmation or guidance from the Lord 
And I set a time or um, connect through the Zoom meeting and I speak to them what God is showing me at the time. My gift is that, that I don't really know what I'm going to speak. <laughs> so <laughs> when I'm in a meeting and God just give me that uh, vision because it kind of, I have a gift as a seer. So I can see the things in spirit where I can get understanding or I can get word at the time. So, and I speak to them. And I, I know my place. It is not about me. It is all about God, what he's okay. speaking. And I'm just obedient. And knowing that um, when I'm obedient, the words I um, deliver will help that person to shift their um, destiny or shift their identity or mainly shift their mindset to see what God is saying in the situation they can move forward. So that's my journey right now. Amen. I am a witness firsthand of what the Lord is doing in your life, because what people don't know in those listening, um, I was able to receive a prophetic word through you. The Lord used you to deliver a prophetic word. And it's so interesting because um, this had to be what, like a month ago, maybe? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. yeah, like like about a month ago. <laughs> I know. Um, but it was, I was in such a, I'm not going to say a dark place, but I was in such a uncertain place in my life because I was blessed and I noticed all the blessings around me, but I couldn't quite hear from the Lord. And I felt like I didn't know which direction to take. And I kept seeking to hear his voice and seeking to hear his voice. And I just wasn't hearing anything. Mm -hmm. And I actually had planned on going to L.A. I'm in San Diego. So it's about two hour drive because there is a church in L.A. that has a prophetic pastor. Mm -hmm. And so that day I had planned. I was like, you know what? I need to hear from the Lord. If I can't do it myself, I'm going to go seek help from someone mm -hmm. else. And I had planned to go to LA that morning. And then I woke up that morning with cramps and I had started my cycle. And so I felt terrible. So I, now I'm like, I don't feel right. I don't want to be there. Like, I, I, I want to go to LA. I need this word. God, why are you stopping me from receiving this word from you? I was so upset because I just wanted to hear from the Lord. Mm -hmm. Like it, I was, I wasn't ungrateful because like everything that could be right was happening in my life, but there were so many things that were coming at me that were so amazing and all these blessings. I'm like, well, which one do I take? Which one do I go with first? Like, God, like, I don't know what to do. And I remember I was scrolling through Facebook and Sandra, a mutual friend of ours, Sandra Acacia, has a group on Facebook called Lead with Momentum that we're both in. I never see Sandra's post. Never. And for some reason, I just happened to see Sandra's post and she was like, hey, we're doing a monthly meetup. Hop on this Zoom call. And I was like, okay, I'll hop on the Zoom call. You know, it's not like I'm doing anything else. I can't go to LA. I don't feel right. I don't want to be around people. So I'm just going to hear and like, let whatever they say pour into me. Cause I knew that, you know, Sandra's a woman of God, the women in her community are amazing. So even if I didn't speak, I knew that there would be stories and testimonies that would bless my life. And so I hop on this call and then the internet goes out. <laughs> no, you disappear. <laughs> we miss you. Kayla disappear. We need to find her and have her back. <laughs> Literally, I was so frustrated. It was like one thing after another. I'm like, the internet goes out. I was like, you know what? I don't even care anymore. I go to my husband. He gets the internet back on. And I look at my phone and like, I have all these messages. Like Sandra's like, hey, if you can, hop back on. Jatia's like, hey, Kai has a word from you. Hop on. And I was like, who is Kai? Like, what are, what are they talking about? And Sandra's like calling me. I had missed calls. And I'm like, okay, the internet's up. Let me hop back on. And then here you are on this call. And you delivered this prophetic word speaking to my life, exactly what I needed from the Lord, the direction I needed to take, um, confirmation from some of the things that I was questioning. And you just allow the Holy Spirit to speak through you. You did not know me. No. I don't think you <laughs> have ever met before, no. but you just allow the Holy Spirit to speak through you. And what's amazing is that all the other women on the call, there were like six of us, all the other women on the call after you began to speak, the Lord allowed them to see different things. Mm -hmm. And all of us began to speak into each other's lives. And I felt so blessed because that call was like an hour long. And it was, I feel like it was just for me because all of these women, starting with your obedience, just began to pour into my life and 
You showed me visions of what God was showing you with me when it came to speaking. And so I had no choice but to invite you onto this podcast because oh, I want to, I, I want people to know, I want people to know the Lord like you know the Lord. Mm-hmm. Because it's not just, and one thing you told me that I literally repeat almost every single day to myself, it's not about the creation, it's about mm-hmm. the creator. That's right. And when you told me that, I was like, everything that I do, yes, I'm working unto the Lord, but I'm not working unto the Lord wanting or desiring the blessings over the relationship with him. I'm working unto the Lord knowing that he has created me to do this work. Mm -hmm. And it's not about the creation. It's about the creator and really having that loving relationship with our creator. And so I really just wanted to thank you for your obedience. (laughs) And Michaela, it's, the, it's my privilege. I don't take it for granted. And God bless um, the coach Sandra that, that she allow us to have them talk. And I'm I'm grateful when she whenever she has a, she gave me a, that opportunity to speak to somebody's life. And I I'm grateful. You know that trust. It's like just that I'm I'm just so grateful for her trust. Um, for um, that understanding um came to me. I when I was spent time with, with the Lord. And then literally I I saw that the whole creation was created, but in before God, but who created? And then the creator is much greater and creator is much worthy than whole creation, whole universe. Mm-hmm. And so I my focus shifted from the what he could create or what he has created around me. And from the place and to the creator. And then I had understanding in the scripture and Jesus told us to buy the field and because there is a kingdom and there's treasure in the field. And then um, we have a different interpretation for that. But for me personally, that treasure is the Jesus. That treasure is the creator. Mm-hmm. We, we sell everything to buy the field, just go to heaven to have a fun. But we have much greater treasure. That's the creator himself. And that's the his invitation. They're not just for us to go and ha- to have a good life on this earth, but for us to uh, have that companionship, to have the relationship, to grow in the knowledge of God. It's the true treasure we can explore, we can, we can have. Is, which is available to us and that's God's intention for us to have Amen. so that's that's the place that um I learned from him from God and I think that um I, that's the what I when I will I um spend time with the people that's the what I want to lead the people to the Lord because um you know when you compare to all other religions and then other religions is the same way people want to be protected want a blessing and then everything goes well that's the main main thing we believe in something yeah. and but for for um the Christianity is much more something about Christianity that God himself in kind of send the invitation for us to have this opportunity to know him personally one to one and that's the um that's the such a privilege for us to have and um so when we know God and knowing who God is in um not just what he can do for us but just who we, for who he is in all of the knowledge of who he is and can captivate our heart and then when you are in love with somebody, you know, it's like you really don't care anything else. Mm-hmm. Now it's like you are full of attention. It's about the person. How can I please the person? You mm-hmm. know, I think that's what other saints went through. That um, went through in a way that um, uh, in a way that they understood who is more worthy, yeah. what is more worthy, who is more worthy, and I, and then I think their conclusion is that God. Or Jesus is more worthy to sacrifice their life for the mission they are, were entrusted and entrusted because they saw much greater treasure in him. And I remember one time that I was spending time with the Lord, and Lord asked me, What could be your eternal reward? And I said, um, and then um then he said, Can I be your um eternal reward? And I say, Yes, like. And because I understood this, because when you travel with somebody and um, you travel with somebody you love, 
then yeah. whether it's a desert, <laughs> whether it's a mountain top, and you will have fun. It yeah. is about presence of the person you love and you enjoy. But if you are traveling traveling with somebody you don't like and you have an amazing hotel as you're staying and you have beautiful food, still you will not enjoy the time yeah. with the person. <laughs> it is all about the presence. And then uh, the presence of God, uh, when I start to know about who he is and through words and through experience, and I, I'm in awe of him. And I thought, you really, you really love us that much? Yes. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> like, really? <laughs> you know, I have those moments. And then, um, and I remember those times that, you know, we are living in this broken world with the broken people. So we have challenges, including ourselves, you know, our weakness, shortcomings. But still, I remember whenever I spent time with the Lord and one word from God shift everything. Mm -hmm. shift all the perspective then I, I'm strengthened I know what to do and how to do and I'm just empowered to take next step to move forward the things that I don't see right now so I can dream with God and so uh, that's why that um one of the reasons I want to kind of join the this <laughs> this group of people one of your coach you know? so I thought I will I will be available to help others to have the experience when they hear the one word from the Lord can shift everything in their lives. Amen. I love it. I absolutely love it. Kai, I'm curious. You talked about how when you became a born again Christian, it became all about living for Jesus Christ. Did you have, how, how did, how did you come to Christianity? Like, did you grow up in a household where you were exposed to it? Is it something that you just kind of stumbled upon at a certain age in your life? How did, how were you first introduced to Christ? Um, you know, actually, that uh, I grew up in Presbyterian church, so I knew about the Bible, and um, I used to go to a church, but it was more religious setting, so I had a knowledge of God, mm -hmm. and I I tell the people, you know, my based on my experience, I joined a fan club of Jesus, but I didn't have a relationship with Jesus, Ooh. so I had a knowledge about Him, but I never really know Jesus, and so. Um, that's the until university. And then um, my major was po political science, political science, politics. So I, so when I start to understand all those things in the world and then a suffering of people, I got mad at God. I was like, Lord, something is wrong with the Christianity. Like, how can it be? You know? Anyway, um, after that, I think I walk away from the Lord. But after I came to Canada, when um after I came to Canada, I had a lot of uh I was so grateful to God. And um even though I didn't have a relationship with the Lord, but still I had a, this kind of knowing there is um bigger being uh beyond my existence. So um and then um I I started to go to Korean church and mainly because I, I want to be a, a insurance advisor at the time. <laughs> I had different jobs in the past. <laughs> anyway, um, then and then um, I was interested in Aboriginal um, Aboriginal people in Canada. So they had a mission trip. So I joined the mission trip. I went to mission trip, and then during the mission trip, I had this encounter with the presence of Holy Spirit. That I remember, you know, the children, we took care of children for one week and they were running around everywhere. You know, it's really hard <laughs> to keep them, to focus. Mm -hmm. So the last day of this um, mission trip, the leader told us that I'm going to pray for these children. But if they don't stay, um, and then I'm going to pray very, very quick. So, OK, so we're going to do that. So when, um, but I remember on the day um, in the hall he invite them to come to the front and whether they want, if they want to accept Jesus as a friend. So then I saw that all these children ran to the front and they knew, they knew. And I, I, and then one girl, she had a little baby sister. So she, I can feel that she just wanted to go to the front, but she couldn't. So I stayed with her. And so these leaders started to pray and I can feel that suddenly the atmosphere was totally different because I have spent time with them for one week. But the place was so quiet. Nobody moved. Like, there was a, such a stillness in the place. 
And then and the leader was pray, was able to pray for a very long time. But these children didn't move at all. And so I thought, wow, this is a this is a, a supernatural event happening in the midst of us. And then I was I was walking back to um to the pastor's house we were staying where we were staying and um and then i felt the pr- uh, presence like touching my shoulder and something at the time i felt like my spirit awake this is like spiritual awakening experience mm-hmm. i can only ex- explain mm-hmm. i'm just telling you that what i experienced and then it was amazing when i read when i opened the bible before then when i opened the bible it was like um i'm reading a book about about jewish culture or book of the history but it wasn't but when i after i have the experience when i opened the bible like all the words came alive to me and Mm -hmm. i i started to thank god and he opened my eyes to see and understand what is written in the world so um that's how uh, my journey um has begun with the lord and then um, I'm gonna just tell you when I heard from his heard from him for the first time. Mm-hmm. That um, is a one service I was there, and um, pastor the pastor talked about the scripture. My sheep will hear my voice, mm-hmm. and I said to the Lord, "I want to hear your voice too. <laughs> I'm one of them, you know." So I I was praying, 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 and I'm praying like, "Lord, I'm one of them too. I want to hear." <laughs> so I was praying. Suddenly, you know, when you um, listen radios and then so, then you have to kind of turn mm-hmm. in the right signal. So you're turning and suddenly you, something clicked and you can hear it so clearly. That's how I felt. Suddenly something clicked. I heard his voice for the first time and he's called my Korean name. You know, I have in Canada for a while. So everybody calls me Kai, but he called me my Korean name, Kyunghee. And he told me uh, he loves me. I love you in Korea. He spoke to me. And so uh, I I I web and web and web because of, like uh, for years, I didn't hear somebody calling me in Korean, my Korean name or speaking Korean to me. And then that at the time, my impression was that if father had a moment every one second to reach out to me, that's what he will say to me. He loves me. And I web and web and web. So that's how I um, I heard from the Lord. And then that was the journey I had to hear from him and then to pray according to um, his heart desire. Because uh, I said myself, that, oh, I he, he knows the best thing for all of us. So whenever I pray, I thought, like, you have the best solution for this mm-hmm. situation. So I decide to wait. Always before I pray, I wait upon the Lord. And then, and then God started to show me a scripture or show me a vision and what's going to happen. So, or his heart desire for this situation. And, and then he gave me understanding, you know, he's, he has a more compassion for any situation. So when I wait upon the Lord, actually he touched my heart. So I receive his heart and I touch my heart and my heart is moved. And I pray according to his heart desire. For that situation and i know the prayer will be answered because it was not from me it was his will and it was his heart desire so that's how i learned how to pray amen amen i love your story i i just love your story i just love you <laughs> I, oh, I love, love you, you too <laughs> I was like, Praise the Lord. at least i will have fun with michaela i don't know what i'm gonna say but i'm gonna have fun with michaela <laughs> i just i i love what the lord is doing in your life and it takes me back to um the call that i was on with you and you painted this beautiful picture and you said when I think about God, I am like a tiny ant. This literally, this, this and I keep these stories with you because I'm just like, Kai's amazing. You're like, when I think about God, I'm like a tiny ant. And I'm just sitting here on the ground, worshiping and waving my little tiny ant hands. And God looks down on all of the earth. Mm-hmm. Think about all the countries, all the water, all the plants, all the species. He looks down on all the word, all the earth, and he sees this tiny ant worshiping. Mm-hmm. And if he can see me, the tiny ant, how mm-hmm. much more can he see each and every one of us? That's and great. for you to humble yourself, mm-hmm. like to humble yourself before the Lord, to wait on the Lord, to speak to you and through you, 
to have the heart for someone else and deliver the word that he has for them. I am just in awe of what God is just doing in your life because it takes a special person to truly humble themselves in that way. I, I, I will not say that uh, it was my effort to be humble. But, you know, when you start to know God, you don't have any choice. That's what it is. Like for me that, uh, like, you know, I know my shortcomings, my weakness. Like, you know, com- like I remember, I remember that when God gave me an understanding about David, you know, when David went to fight um, uh, um, Goliath, and then what happened is that um, he showed me, you know, that was the doom day for Israel, you know, like the whole, all the Israelites said there were armies there and this army, the uh, Palestine's armies are shouting and cursing, you know, imagine how noisy it could be. Mm-hmm. And then this Israelite army are trembling in fear and they will pray, but they're out of fear, trembling in fear. And, but that was the doom day for whole nation. Because if they lose the battle and they think about their wives, their mm-hmm. children, and all they have in the nation. So there was a doom day. And but still David went there. <laughs> like he was he was not praying. He mm-hmm. got he declared, say, How dare you come against army of the most high God? And he declared. And God gave me understanding that David knew. God much greater than what he was experiencing, what he was facing, what he was hearing. And he knew God much greater over the situation. And his God showed me that it's like when you think about that they were fighting somewhere. Mm-hmm. You know, and then if you kind of go out of uh out of this space and go up to the sky, high sky, actually, it's somewhere in the land. And then you go up higher in universe, it's like smaller than tiny ants. Yep. Try to fight each other. <laughs> you see what I mean? But God is much greater who created the whole universe. In the God side, it is nothing. But somehow David tapped into a place he saw God much greater than what he was experiencing. And that's what he was able to declare. And he, when he declared, aligned with God's greatness and God, who God is, and God answered his declaration, then all these people who are praying out of fear, that fear and trembling fear, mm-hmm. God delivered the nation. So I believe in um, alignment. But to have the alignment, we need to see God and wait upon the Lord. And then so the when I pray, then God showed me that um that you know one of one I appreciate whatever God showed me uh, in vision. And um, what I appreciate most is that um to understand who who God is, his heart. Because it, God showed me that I was one time I was praying and God was in like tiny ant kneeling, <laughs> the tiny leg, and lift up my tiny arms to the heaven. And every other ants were busy working. And when I did that, and I saw God, big God from the sky, and his eyes are fixed on me, fixed on this tiny ant. And I saw, you are God who can who can um give the attention to the such a little details, a little, little tiny ant, and still you receive the worship from me and you are pleased. So even though um, in full universe, right now in full earth, billions of people, but still when I turn my attention to God and he cares and he looks from heaven, he connect with me and he give me his full attention. God is eternal God in a way, eternity. It's like when you, it's like that kind of mind blowing when you think about eternity. But I remember one worship leader explained so well and I, he stuck with me. That if you um, eternity divide by any number, it's the same eternity. Mm. But if you put any number, 10,000, 100,000 years we live, divide by eternity is zero. So whatever we have on this earth, because it's limited, it's, it's not eternal, it's mm. not never ending. So whatever we have on this earth is limited compared to his eternity is zero, nothing. So that's a, um, so the um, for God, he has this capacity, even though we have billions of people divide his eternal love capacity, divide by billions of people, mm. it's the same eternal, eternal. eternity. Amen. He can have a pay, he can pay attention, full attention to each one of us. 
and it's like we are the only one on this earth. Or he can give a full it this full amount, full measure of love toward each one of us. And that's his his he, that's who he is. Full attention when he um connect one by one in the sight of God, each one of us is such a treasure and beautiful um creation in his sight. And I think that's the when I when I uh, share uh, his word toward people, I am praying that um, I'll I'll deliver his heart and his loving kindness, his affection, and and toward the, each one of them, they'll receive that attention. It's not just like one of the mm -hmm. <laughs> many many Christian br brother and sister. Somehow they got one word. No, that's not what it is. It is one to one. He really wants to speak the word to know knowing the full history of the person watching the journey in the moment he wants to intervene and speak to the person and and, and because the person is so precious in the sight of god amen. So. <laughs> amen i love it and i guess it goes back to what you said when god asked you can can he be your eternal treasure and you say yes if god can look at us as his eternal treasures why wouldn't we want to give our lives to him and for allow Jesus to be our eternal treasure? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, um, um, you know, I shared with you last time that uh, that revelation came to me one day. Um, I was at the beach. Um, you know, the, before I share this experience, I'm going to just what, let people know that, you know, each one of us can see, can hear, and can understand what I saw, what I understand. Like, all of us um, can do that. Just ask God for a gift, ask God for activation, and ask God for experience. A lot of case, um, our unbelief or our fear to tap into that those uh, experience hinder us not to have the relationship because mm -hmm. God all God like each one of our children mom and dad wants to have that loving relationship with each one of children it's the same with God I went to a beach and that's where I spent time with the Lord and I went to a beach one day I stood at the um the bank and and then um I felt like a God this whole creator of the whole universe and looking at me like I'm the only creation. Like I'm the only like I'm the only child on the whole universe. And I said to God, like, I am not the only child because there are so many Christians, brothers and sisters, and there are billions of people on this earth. But I felt like you were looking at me like I'm the only child, beloved, um, favorite child. Mm -hmm. And then and then I understood, understood came to me. Uh, is that, you know, um, even though there are billions of people living on this earth right now, but I am only um, one, can we, <laughs> like Kai, and there is no other. For generations, I'm the only one. And it's like Michaela is the only one Michaela yeah. on whole billions of people. There is no one like her. And for generations, Michaela is just only one Michaela, and that's that. That's how precious each one of us in the sight of God. We are one of kind and treasure and creation in the sight of God. That's why when He prepared a seat, <laughs> prepare a place for us, it's yeah. not we are not competing with each other because He has. I got show me. It's like He has customized princess dress just for Michaela to sit on the seat in the, His presence. And crown just for her, customized. He is very personal. He has so he even though he um he wants to um save so many people to come to the kingdom, but including ministering, you know, when you go to um to crusade or mission trip, and so many people are coming to the Lord, or we see that a lot of healing happens and deliverance happen. Mm -hmm. But in the sight of God, I, I felt the one time that in the uh, in the church and then having the service, in the sight of God, God knows each one of their stories, how they came to the Lord and suffering they had through, including healings. Yeah. He knows what kind of pain they went through. He knows everything about the person. So when he encountered um, God encounter with her to receive a healing. He knows what it means to the person. It is very precious moment between the person and him. It looks the same for us, but it's not in the sight of God because God knows those stories behind. Um, because and God really cares <laughs> and loves each one of those individuals. Amen. I love it. 
I, I literally can sit here and talk to you all day long. Okay, so <laughs> one thing you mentioned um, about your vision at the beach is that a lot of people um, don't want to pursue or seek God or hear from God because of fear. Mm -hmm. And I am learning personally that when the Lord reveals something to me, it kind of is scary. Like it, it's kind of scary, like, cause it's not natural. It's not mm -hmm. something that, you know, we're taught growing up or something that happens to us all the time because we've mm -hmm. never seek the Lord. So for those who are wanting to hear from God as a prophetic intercessor, as a prayer warrior that you are, how do you combat the fear that may, that your flesh may experience when you first experience the Holy Spirit? Because mm -hmm. I had a personal experience with the Holy Spirit and it kind of scared the crap out of me. Like, I'm not even going to lie to you, Kai. It scared the crap out of me. And I thought I was in a scary movie, but it was an amazing experience because as you said, you know, and as the Bible says, my sheep, like the Lord says, my sheep know my voice. So like we recognize his voice and we follow him. So I knew that I was in the spiritual presence of the Lord, but it was so unnatural to me that it was like scary. And it was like, do I want to experience that again? Um, I don't know. I guess, can you speak to the fear, the fear that may arise in the flesh? You know, um, you know, th this is very interesting because, uh, you know, nowadays people are interested in a lot of spiritual stuff. And then so people are watching all those videos and movies or or go and like, go and see a fortune teller. You know, mm -hmm. like, there are a lot of things, including a lot of activities going on. And but the, when it comes to Christianity, we have more fear in God. You know, it's amazing. So and I realized one time we have more fear in the in in um in the church. Um, um, so I thought, what, what could it be? Why is that? And I understood that because of some of the things we learn uh, to fear God and to talk about holy God, and we have to be holy before the Lord and we'll have consequences. God spoke to me uh, that um, and then it, that this helped me to help me in the journey is that it is about relationship. It's not about what to do and what not to do. Um, so because of if we are so think about it uh, before Jesus came to the came to, to the earth in 400 years, nobody heard the voice of God. There was no voice of God uh, during the time. And then um, so what they have to do is that what was left was a written word and they tried to be careful not to do the things and what they became very religious and literally legalistic because they didn't have a relationship with God. I think best part uh, to be in a relationship is that you will know the person's intention. It's like when I spend time with you, Michaela, if I don't know you, then one word you say, I might misunderstand mm -hmm. easily. Because mm -hmm. we are from different culture, you know, mm -hmm. so English is my second language. So when you are in a relationship, we can ask or we can have a more mm -hmm. time together to know who you are. And then later on, I will know when you say, ah, that means I will receive, ah. You know? yeah. <laughs> it, but if before that, if you just write a letter to me, this is what it is. De uh, depending on um, how I perceive you, I will understand the letter in different manners. Mm -hmm. The words has that limitation. The wor written word has that limitation. That, uh, for example, we say, I love you, but depending on our experience with the love, we actually saying different things. Mm -hmm. that, that happened to happen a lot in the church. When we talk about love of father, the people don't have a good experience with the father. They 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 mm -hmm. they they don't receive like, oh, really? <laughs> oh my God, it's like father. Like mm -hmm. because they have never learned beyond their experience about love, the word love or father. So they have to go through the process to be healed from the past, to be able to uh, learn and receive the love of God and to be experience the love of God. And through the experience, they were able to overcome their fear and challenges mm -hmm. or limitation. So word itself has a limitation. That's why we, we need a Holy Spirit. And then uh, we need that that um revelation yeah. uh, revelation means that the word has to be 
uh, come alive. For me, that uh, you know, I had uh, those experience. I made uh, mistakes because uh, relationship is staying. We can miscommunicate. <laughs> you know, there are times miscommunication. But for me, my journey when I look back, now my journey was that um, I had the uh, people around me help me and guide me um, when I make mistakes. Also. Um, any mistakes I made, I always searching to know who God is. So including Bible scripture, when I read the scripture, I try to understand his character because uh, um, uh, I'm not focusing on what he's capable to do, what he did, but it's about who he is. Mm -hmm. um, you know, God gave me this understanding when he says he's a savior, his name equals his character. Yeah. So when he says, uh, he's a savior means he saves continuously. That's the present Ooh. tense. He saves continuously. That's his character. He so provider is not uh, uh, just provide one time become a provider. So for example, the savior is the same way that a person can become a savior when the person save on one occasion and the person became a savior for that person. But for God, when he is savior, I am means he's present continuously, always he saves. Mm -hmm. He's provider, he always provides. Mm -hmm. He's healer, he always heals. His name equals his character. So, so, so those ones, that, those ones, so whenever I receive any, um, teaching and revelation or um, any experience I had, always I I measure, is it, does it bring life and does it bring truth? Does it bring, um, have the main thing, the deeper understanding of who God is? Does it align with his character in his world? So those are the ones kind of helped me in the journey. But I have a news for you, Michaela. I don't have a clear whole answer for the journey. <laughs> Because each one kind of works in a little bit different way. So I don't have a whole encyclopedia to mm -hmm. answer for that. But I think that uh, I would just say that um, um, in my journey, and the, first of all, when I, when you, if you, Michaela, you ask me, Laura, I want like, I want more experience, then I will just pray, Holy Spirit, I trust you because I know He's gentle, mm -hmm. I know He's trustworthy. I know he's faithful. I trust God. Then when I pray, and when you pray and asking God, he will guide you in that journey to know him more Amen. and experience him more. Amen. Kai, what does it mean to be a prophetic intercessor? How does that oh. work? Okay. Prophetic intercessor. Okay, so um, people can intercede on behalf of others, and he God hears our prayers. Um, but uh, I realized that uh, we are not giving God enough time mm. um, because like, you know, when you want to have a conversation, you need to listen. <laughs> it's like, so yeah. most of the time, it's like <laughs> if you are sitting with somebody, like, you know, that person has an answer or that person has something to share with you. It could be coach, or it could be a preacher, it could be a teacher. We will sit down and wait until that person will speak. Yeah, <laughs> It's the same principle that uh, we have a tendency when we go to a prayer meeting and then we start to just lay out the things we believe all the problems or and all of them first but we never really had a chance to wait to listen from the lord so because he's the one who knows the answer so yeah. we need to give god a time to talk to us but sometimes like my, my so i i was just sharing my experience one time um, I set my heart, I'm going to just always wait until I kind of stir up inside me or until God show me something, I will not open my mouth. I'm going gonna to wait. So that's how I started this practice. And then and then one time I went to prayer meeting and then, you know, we had this tendency to hold the hands, let's pray. So we hold the hands and then and pray. And then I was quiet and somebody was like, you need to pray, <laughs> you need to pray. It's like, <laughs> so I tried to start to open my mouth and start to pray. Uh, and then I felt my prayer was bouncing back from the ceiling. So mm -hmm. I talked to the Lord, like, what happened to my prayer? And God spoke to me, are you talking to me or are you yep. talking to them? Oh. So because he said to me, my, my, because I, I knew what he was saying, because my attention was, I was so, um, 
aware of other people who are listening my prayer. <laughs> so I try to pray like, you know, nice way, <laughs> more elegant way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but I was not paid. I'm not giving God full attention to him. And mm -hmm. I was not giving um, full attention to his presence who is listening to me. So, so I learned the lesson. So I, that's kind of the nowadays when I when I talk about prayer time is that um, when I when I come to a place in prayer time, I had to release any worries in my heart. You know, there is a difference between being quiet and being still in His presence. Actually, that I will uh, introduce the one uh, one one of the preachers. Uh, his name is Eric Gilmore. He teaches that a lot, and um, you can check it out. And um, he has a message for bride for this hour. Um, so there are others too. Um, but um, the difference between being quiet and being still in His presence is this. When we don't talk, we are quiet, but still in our mind is noisy. In this, uh, a lot of things happen during, during the day, so a lot of things going on in our no like in our mind. So that some people just write it down. Or for me, I release those worms onto Jesus. I lay them all, surrender. I just surrender all those things to God, to Jesus, surrender all. And then when I did that, and at a certain point, my mind is quiet and still. And I hear from God and I hear from God or I see a vision. So that, so I learned to be, learn to be still in his presence and pay attention to like my heart has to be still worship help. And I worship the Lord and my full attention, my thought, my, uh, my heart is, uh, is in a place of worship and to God and knowing he's the, my own one audience not anybody else. He's my one audience, my full attention to the Lord. And I um, give a worship and praise or thanksgiving and and wait and be still before the Lord. And I hear from the Lord. He show me the things or he give me a scriptures. And when I, after that, when I read the scriptures, sometimes I give me understanding of those scriptures. So kind of that's where, and I pray in, in a place of setting a prayer. And then because I have, um, I practiced that for many years now. So that when I'm in a, a prayer meeting, um, then a prayer meeting, and then when God show me something, then I know that I what I'm doing is it's like I'm releasing what God's plan for for this situation and situation releasing because of what my what I'm doing is that I'm actually agreeing with what God is doing in heaven. It's alignment and then to be released on this earth. Kind of that's the prophet intercession. So literally the the prayer, like your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, allowing mm -hmm. the will of the Lord to be done through you mm -hmm. in stillness. Mm -hmm. So I have to hear from him first. Yeah. But uh, now I'm like, a, I, I encounter God 2004. So it's been a while how God train me over the years and then so i have i'm more i'm more confident about what i'm hearing and what i'm seeing in vision and hearing and discern uh, discern what god is showing me so uh, because at, over the time that um it's like the relationship mm -hmm. it's like in the marriage you know when you have been married your husband for a long time when mm -hmm. he's he just one look can speak sentences yep. you know? <laughs> something yeah. like that so just knowing knowing and trust relationships so so i um kind of that's where i'm at <laughs> i love it i absolutely love it it i recently was studying glory and what the glory of the lord means and mm -hmm. i came to an understanding and the holy spirit revealed to me that glory is the physical manifestation of god's spiritual presence mm -hmm. and i'm realizing that literally to pray for the Lord's will to be done in your life and to pray to see the glory of the Lord. We are just asking for God's presence to rest on us. Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned, we have to be still. We have to remove those fears, remove those worries and not just be quiet because I'm learning in prayer. You, like you're so right. When you pray, your mind is moving. You're thinking about what did I eat for breakfast? What am I going to make for dinner? Did I wash the clothes this evening? Like all the things in the world are going through your mind, but you're trying to focus on what people want you to say or what mm -hmm. you're supposed to say and not necessarily sitting, mm -hmm. allowing the Lord to speak through you, mm -hmm. casting your cares on him, mm -hmm. and then just 
operating in that alignment to where he's going to lead your next word or your next step or your next action. Mm -hmm. It's it's like um you know I remember one time that I'm I was praying for on one lady and I saw that she was very busy in kitchen and cooking and cleaning dishes everywhere and I saw the Holy Spirit standing right behind her and whole time she never say hi to Holy Spirit and that's what we do to God all the time because Holy Spirit with us in twenty four hours seven days He lives in us. And so that's the that's what Bible says. <laughs> we are baptizing Holy Spirit, and He's the Spirit of God in us and with us. And but um, so I I had to um, I start to practice that I acknowledge His presence with me twenty four hours seven days after I saw the vision. Like I I don't want I could say hi to <laughs> you know because it's like invisible friend invisible God. And that's yeah. the reality in the world. Yeah. It's because we don't see it, we don't hear, but he's with us 24 hours, seven days. So, and then one day I said, I said to the Lord, oh, I felt like you're far away. I feel like you don't hear from me. I like, I don't, I don't know where you, where you are. I feel like so distant. He said to me, how far can I go? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 and so the, the and then after that and then after that it's like you know there are some like that someday like I'm still learning how to organize and, mm -hmm. and then and then one day I walk into my room Lord you know like you know if I want to invite guests and I want to clean everything perfect in my house you know I want to be holy I want to do everything right to invite His presence into my home and like, how can I really have you? And I realized this is the reality. He lives with me 24 yep. hours, seven days in yep. my weakness and shortcomings. He knows about me more than I know about myself. Amen. Like that's like, because mm -hmm. it, it, like it's like a what well, it was like a, he showed me one time it was like a um it was like a um x-ray, you know, x-ray going through the body and everything. But they, I saw that people are walking around me like a mirror, but this mirror has a different shape. So what 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 it means is that um, when we encounter anybody and talk to each other, it's like a, when I talk to Michaela, you will only understand me based on your experience yeah. and who you are. You will not totally get me because you only understand the way you can understand me. That's the yeah. how it, um, like I reflect you, you see me through the reflection of who you are. So I saw all these different shape of mirror all around me. They reflect the way they can reflect me. But God comes like see through uh, X-ray, see through me, everything bright light comes through me, and He sees everything inside, outside, everything about me. So that that's the I always when I um when I'm alone or with others, I tr I always try to remind myself that's how God sees me. Nothing is hidden in the sight of God, including my thought. He knows yeah. my thought and everything. Nothing is hidden. So and and then and I'm trying to be conscious of His presence, conscious of uh, Him. Yeah. And so when I'm conscious of His presence, who He is, and great I am in we forget His great I am in mm -hmm. His loving kindness. His great I am and his uh, his faithfulness. And so when I know his character, his great I am and his love, you know, like so the when I know his character and, and then I trust in his goodness, then um in his goodness, then um I have a more trust in him. And when I'm with others and I I can um, as I'm conscious of his presence more, I can say and do the things, even though people might not understand me. Mm -hmm. Because I always remember the scripture Daniel said, the, the Daniel said to Nebuchadnezzar said, um, he is the one who gave your breath. He's the one who holds your destiny. So I'm just trying to be accountable to God mm -hmm. <laughs> who holds my destiny for not just this life, for eternity. So work in progress <laughs> amen we're all a work in progress kai where can people find you where can they connect with you where can they learn more about you and what you're doing um so i create a website um journey with kylie um dot com the people can go to the website to find me um so i'm hoping to start a podcast and i said to the lord i had this were between God and me. I said, you know, there are many voices uh, in 
So in podcasts, like, why do I need to add one more? <laughs> and secondly, Lord, English is not my first language. So okay, why you're do doing you so well. <laughs> Michaela, you're so kind to me. I love my P2P sisters. <laughs> They're so kind to me. I was like, Lord, why is that? And then um, and then I understood. I understood, um, you know, that um, when you see the different cups, you know, that there are cups like a beautiful, actually the Paul was talking about it. There are beautiful cups. It's like a use in temple or use in palace and beautiful mm-hmm. golden cup or there are wooden cups. Like, But still, it's not about how it looks. It's about what it serves. Mm-hmm. If the cup is full of um, wine, beautiful wine, the fragrant wine will fill the room, and the people will enjoy the wine. If um, if the um, golden beautiful cup has um, vinegar in it, and <laughs> that vinegar will not be really mm-hmm. tasty. It's not gonna be helpful. So it's the same way. It's not about uh, who who it is. It's about the vessel. It is about his presence. It is not about the who is speaking what. It is about the um, who God chose to speak through. And it is all about what he wants to share and release mm-hmm. in this hour. And so, um, and, and so I'm just decided to be obedient as yes. a kind of love offering to him. So yes. I'm hoping to start a podcast. Um, so the podcast will be the same name with a journey with Kylie. And actually I thought I want to do journey with God, but it might be people might like, what kind of God is he? You know? So I thought, Say journey with Kylie, <laughs> but I'm helping others to have a journey with God. So mm-hmm. kind of that's the intention of that name. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait to subscribe. I can't wait for you to get this out here because they need to hear your voice. They need to hear the voice of the Lord through you. Yeah. There's some things that only you can deliver that the Lord is entrusting you to deliver and the people need to hear the voice of the Lord through you. Absolutely. So I'm excited about your podcast. Thank you. Um, but yes, you guys, please connect with Kylie. Please visit her website, Journey with Kylie. I will have all of the links in the descriptions down below in the show notes. Um, Kai, before I let you go, I have three questions. Okay. I like to end every interview with. You're just going to tell me the first thing that comes to mind. Right now? Oh, no, I'm going to ask you the questions. You ready? Okay. Okay. (laughs) Okay. Question number one, what does it mean to be about your father's business? Means to be the father's business? To be about your father's business. Yep. Okay. For me, father's business is to let people know how much he loves each one of them. He truly loves. Amen. Question number two, what are you grateful for in this season of your life? Oh, right now, you know, I am so grateful that um, literally, like, he gave me life. He yeah. died on the cross. And every day I said, this is the day it goes and I will not get it back. And this is the day Jesus died on the cross for me and for me to have a life, life abundantly. So that's what I'm grateful every day. And I have a lot of grateful things, including my family, or the husband, but that's the kind of grateful amen i love it now the last question how are you sharpening the women in your life okay so um, i sharpen in a way that um help you know that we live a life because we are living real in reality with broken people and broken world and so we have a lot of dust on us and it's like uh, each one of us is a beautiful diamond in the sight of God, but we had a lot of mud. And those mud uh, doesn't allow each one of us to be able to shine. Mm-hmm. And so my job is to help um, people to see who they are and help to take away those uh, um, wrong belief and from the past experience and, and those uh, um, hurts and wounds. And uh, so I help them to be healed and deliver from them so they can truly shine for who they are. Amen. Kai, thank you so much for your obedience. Thank you for 
giving your life to the Lord and allowing him to use you each and every day of your life. Thank you for accepting the assignment as a prophetic intercessor and for pouring into my life personally and for joining us here on the podcast today. Thank you so much. I am so grateful. Oh, thank you for having me, Kayla. I am nice to talk. Nice talking to you. <laughs> yeah, I'm so grateful for this opportunity. All right, loves. Well, that concludes today's episode of the Faith-Based Storyteller Show. I'll be back on Friday with a Faithful Friday word for you. But just know that in everything that you do, um, you have a story to tell. God has given you a story. It doesn't have to be the biggest story in the world. It doesn't have to be the smallest story in the world. God has given you a story that he wants you to tell. He's given you a testimony to share. And as the Bible says, we overcome the enemy. We overcome Satan by the blood of the lamb, Jesus Christ, and the word of our testimony. So if you're interested in learning how to tell your story, make sure you visit faithbasedstoryteller.com. That's faithbasedstoryteller.com. I have a free download for you that's going to teach you how to tell your story. And if you're interested in getting in a community of not just women, because there may be some men coming, men are welcome, <laughs> but right now we are just women. Um, but if you're interested in getting a community with other faith-based storytellers and really sharpening the gift that God has given you when it comes to using your voice for his glory, then we welcome you in the Faith Audio Network. You guys can join the Faith Audio Network. So I have all the links and everything you need to know down in the description below. But thank you so much for tuning into this episode of the Faith-Based Storyteller Show. As I mentioned, I'll be back with you again on Friday. And until next time, know that God loves you and so do I. Bye.